Hello, hello, hello. Uh, I'd like to uh, begin by saying how much I love and admire April Webster and Alyssa Weisberg. I've, uh, I've worked with them on, uh, on countless projects. Uh, I actually tried to count them and I couldn't, uh, not because there were so many, but just because some came out shitty and I couldn't bear to think about them. But I love and adore them. And uh, if I'm lucky, I will get to continue working with them for the rest of what has apparently become my career. Let's watch a reel of April and Alyssa's work. No, I'm just kidding. No, 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 I'm joking. Stop it, I'm kidding, of course. This award I'm presenting tonight has literally nothing whatsoever to do with April or Alyssa, but because of my long-standing collaboration with them both, I promised them that when I presented this award to Nina Gold, I would speak for at least 45 seconds about them. I, um, I'm almost done with that 45 seconds. Here comes one more mention, April and Alyssa. Okay, I'm done, thank you. Um, Nina Gold, where to begin? Uh, Nina sets a standard, one could say gold standard, but that would be a stupid pun. However, there are times when puns are frighteningly accurate uh, things. Nina is not only the sweetest, uh, kindest, uh, most generous person you could ever imagine working with, uh, but she's also brilliant and intuitive and funnier and more clever than any writer uh, in the room uh, and patently unflappable. Uh, I've worked with many flappable people. Uh, I, on occasion, am, ext am extremely flappable. Directing The Force Awakens was an exercise in flapping, but not for Nina. Uh, I, I wanted to, uh, to say that, um, uh, you know, Miss Gold Standard uh, cast that film with April and Alyssa, but I'm, I'm not gonna mention that uh, since those two already got their 45 seconds. And honestly, this isn't their moment. So, um, but we cast The Force Awakens uh, for months in Los Angeles. Uh, the vast majority of the roles, however, were being cast out of the UK. And as exciting as that was, it was a, a massive challenge uh, to find actors that could handle the burden of carrying a, a Star Wars movie. Whoever that guy uh, that Nina found for Han Solo was, was awesome. Um, <laughs> But today, uh, we can look back and say, of course, it was Daisy Ridley, John Boyega, Oscar Isaac, Adam Driver, and the rest. But the process uh, truly uh, was terrifying. And the thing is, as concerned as I would get, uh, there was Nina just being unflappable and telling me it was gonna be okay, we'd find our cast. And again and again, after auditions that made me question the script far more often than the actors reading the scripts, uh, Nina was a comfort. And she was lovely and funny and encouraging. And it helped that she brought in people like Daisy Ridley, as if there are other people like Daisy Ridley, who are just revelations, discoveries, uh, unknowns, or barely known actors. Uh, and thank God she had cast the wildly uh, entertaining film Attack the Block uh, and helped convince Mr. Boyega to come back more times than I can remember uh, for the role of Finn. And thank God that she knew and had such great relationships with people like Gwen Christie, uh, the absolute best actors in Europe and beyond. Uh, from the lead roles to supporting roles to the day players, there wasn't a bad apple. And Nina and her most excellent former associate, Theo Park, made it fun. Uh, for all of this, I am eternally grateful. Uh, we, were, we were hard at work putting together the cast of The Force Awakens uh, in December of 2013, back when the idea of President Donald Trump was just a punchline to a bad joke. Um, and I'll, I'll never forget the day that I learned that Nina's, Nina's husband, Frank, who had worked with Greenpeace since 1989, was part of the Arctic 30, a group of Greenpeace workers peacefully protesting a Gazprom oil rig who were taken into custody by the Russian Coast Guard and held ultimately for three months in prison cells in Murmansk. And having seen photographs, I can promise you that one thing that none of us uh, in this room ever want to do is spend three months in prison cells in Murmansk. But, but he did, and even through that, as painful and frustrating, difficult as it was to not know Frank's fate, uh, to raise their worried children alone, Nina was impossibly unflappable. And she seemed to have a, a preternatural ability to stay hopeful and, and focused on the job. So many others would have been crushed, but not Nina. It's no accident that shows like Game of Thrones, London Spy, 
The Crown are considered the best of the best of this new golden age of television. They've all been cast by Ms. Gold. Her, her, her uh, incredible list of film credits from The Martian to The Imitation Game to The Theory of Everything, it reads like a, a list of the classiest, smartest, and cleverest films of the modern age, and they are much like the woman who cast them. Let's take a look at some of the work of Nina Gold. It is uh, my pleasure to present the Hoyt Powers Award to a dear friend of April Webster's and Alyssa Weisberg's, <laughs> Ms. Nina Gold. I must say I'm feeling pretty flappable right at this moment. <laughs> and in fact, I'm so on the verge of hysteria that if I start accidentally revealing the plot of Game of Thrones or Star Wars out of sheer panic, <laughs> JJ, can you stage an intervention and just get me off the stage? This is a huge room of people. And it's great to be here on what is probably the last day of civilization as we know it. <laughs> Um, actually, this is probably the moment to ad admit to you all that I, too, am actually American, contrary to appearances, and I'm sorry, CSA, if that undermines my credibility and diversity as a, the only Welsh casting director in the membership. Because <laughs> um, I was born in Syracuse on a night in January, and actually, it's all right, I'm not really going to tell you my life story, don't worry. <laughs> Um, I was just going to say that I've had a fantastic time for the last 30 years, unfortunately, um, doing this funny old game of casting. Um, I started doing music videos and stand mainly kind of hanging out in nightclubs, asking random handsome guys if they wanted to be in a music video the next day. Um, but things have progressed. And now I get to work with some of the most incredibly inspiring and talented and creative people in the world. And I don't really know where to start thanking all those amazing writers and directors and producers and actors. So I guess I won't start, but I am truly grateful. And I love playing my part in this enormous machine that is making these films and telling these stories and the best part of it is the teamwork which is what makes it so great. Um, I'd like to thank some people in this room, some of my great friends and supporters and colleagues over the years and it is going to be a list of names but you know that's what we all love doing. Um, <laughs> Thanks to Mindy Marin, my first friend and ally in LA. To my friends Carmen Cuba and Lorraine Mayfield. Kathleen Chopin, Roger Massenden, Laura Kennedy, my mentor, wherever you are. Randy Hiller, David Rubin, there's quite a lot. Ellen Lewis, Leslie Feldman, Margie Simpkin, Deborah Quiller, Pam Dixon, <laughs> Carrie Fraser, Junian Libby, Francine Maisler, and I think April and Alyssa have had plenty of air time. <laughs> <laughs> and also Mary Vanu and Jeannie McCarthy. And thank you very much to my London gang, who 
make everything happen. Kate Bone and Carla Strong, who are here. And also to Lauren Evans and Martin Ware and Glenda Mariani, who are back home, I hope, successfully convincing people that I'm just on the other line and I'll be calling them back any minute now. <laughs> Um, most of all, Robert Stern, who is the most brilliant casting partner a person could have. <laughs> who, in 11 years, has never, ever been whingy or grumpy or impatient or even tired, unlike me. Um, and thanks to my kids for putting up with it all. And it's customary to thank one's life partner at this point, but because he's also banned from the US for the whole of his life. <laughs> um, on account of a little escapade or felony, in some people's view, <laughs> with, with a dump, dump a truck of coal and the doorstep of the Capitol building, which didn't go down very well with the authorities. But apparently the jails in Washington, D.C. are even more scary than the ones in Russia. Anyway, he's also had enough airtime, so I won't go on too much more. I'm really bowled over and completely thrilled to be given this award by you, my colleagues and friends and peers. And it's a real honour. And it's especially welcome because after the crown and the terrible liberties we've taken with the life and the queen and not to mention that scene with the implied royal blowjob, I'd say my chances of a damehood are totally out of the window. <laughs> so thank you very, very much. And I've been trying to do dry January, which is a thing in England. You probably don't need to worry about it in California. But anyway, it's time for it to end. Thank you very much. <laughs>